Hello everybody, happy Thursday. Welcome to Ask Serena Live. Hey, how are you? Thank you to any replay viewers that are on tonight. I am Janine Truitt, if you don't know. Janine Truitt, and I am the Chief Innovations Officer for Talent Think Innovations LLC, which is a talent management HR consulting strategy firm um, in New York. I am located in Port Jefferson Station, New York. So it's a little bit about me in case you might be new for my replay viewers. You guys know that already. So thank you for joining me. You are tuning into Ask Serena Live, and this is a weekly show Hey, hubby. Hubby made it. <laughs> um, you are tuning into a show that I have developed as a spinoff to some of the other things I do on the interwebs. So I have a YouTube channel that is um, also called Ask Arena, and it's kind of like a supplementary piece um, from a video perspective to my blog, which is the Aristocracy of HR. So Ask Sarina Live is this weekly talk show. It's kind of like my little bubble dream um, where I get to come and talk to you about everything world of work if I so choose. And if I don't choose, I can talk to you about anything I want to um, that doesn't have anything to do with HR. So this is where I'm coming to let my hair down. So I'm excited about it. This is the third week of Ask Sarina Live and I am grateful for everybody that tunes in at 11 p.m. because I know it's late and I know that it's TGIT for a lot of people so you might be catching up on your DVR but um, you're here with me and I appreciate it. So today's topic is about social media. So see this is the point where I'm saying like we don't always have to do it all about HR but um, the topic is is social media destroying lives and it's kind of dramatic. I did that on purpose but I don't know if you've been tuned in, there's just a lot of buzz about social media and whether it's all too much and how are we utilizing it. And, and a lot of it has really been around children, which is a very, very sensitive topic. Thankfully, my children are still way too young to even be on social media. I think my daughter is now kind of learning the lingo about, you know, what is a snap? I don't think she understands, but she she knows that mommy snapchats and she knows that um, occasionally I'm on Facebook and she's starting to kind of understand but she's not on any of these things thankfully and I don't have to worry about that um, but it is a lot to consider as a parent so that that's a separate topic but what I'm wanting to discuss tonight are these two young women young people that have come up out as of late um, basically to put social media under siege and, and say, you know what, social media is straight up evil, um, which is drastic in and of itself. So let's kind of hop into it. So the first article, um, and I came across these because I'm part of some blogger groups. Um, shout out to BLM girls, bloggers like me girls. If any of you are on tonight, um, that group was all a buzz about these two articles I'm going to share with you. And there was a lot of heated discussion. There were people that were kind of like, you know what, if this is how they feel, if this is their reality, who are we to say anything about that? And that's valid. And then there was another half of us that were like, sipping our tea, like, nobody has time for this. You made a decision to be on social media. So let me give you the background. So the background is the first one, it, the article is called My Perfect Life on Social Media is Putting Me in Debt. You don't really know the person's name, but she goes by the name of Jasmine and essentially she says that um, she's several thousand dollars in debt due to Instagram. Um, she spent all this money basically to upkeep an Instagram account um, full of pretty pictures and and uh, you know, luxurious dinners and all these kinds of things that I guess people like to look at on Instagram. And so she basically was coming clean about um, 
the fact that she doesn't live this lifestyle at all in real life and that she's basically been paying somebody to help her portray this persona and you get the sense that she's fairly young because she mentions in the article having to come clean with her parents in um, at some particular point because she's really quite in over her head and I suspect will need some help so you know, with this one, I feel, I, I honestly, I was happy that she came clean. At least she, you know, was recognizing the fact that what she was doing was kind of crazy. But some part of me just really doesn't understand the vanity aspect behind the social media thing. And so, um, you know, I grew up pre-interwebs and, and I'm certainly, thank you for the heart. I appreciate it. Um, so, you know, part of me kind of grew up before all of this was a thing. And so I knew what bullying and pressure looked like from that aspect. Now that we're extremely digital, I just, I don't know what drives a person to spend this kind of money to keep up a persona that's not exactly true. I mean, one of the things that I teach just through my services and, and workshops that I do because I've built a brand on social media is about being authentic, which essentially is like a foo foo shishi word for just keeping it real. And, you know, I think people need to be comfortable with keeping it real, good, bad, or indifferent. The fact that this young woman felt it necessary to spend this money so much so that she's in debt um, to kind of keep up a, an appearance and a life that really was not um, a life she was living just doesn't resonate with me. I mean, I'm glad she figured it out and I certainly think she's going to stop now, now that she's dug such a hole for herself, but it's really never that serious, at least in my own opinion. It's really, really never that serious. And so, you know, she wasn't quite as harsh as the next one that I'm going to share, but you know, she is placing, I guess, she did take responsibility, but there is something to be said about whether social media somehow destroyed her in a sense. So. Let me hop into the next person. Um, the next person you've probably seen because it's been all over the news. And it's this young woman, Asina O'Neill from Australia. And essentially she's just gone on a whole rampage saying that how social media is basically evil and that you know nothing that she's ever put up on her accounts was real, how she was paid to put on dresses and to pose a certain way and to look a certain way and you know none of it was authentic or real and it destroyed her and it made her very unhappy and you know so from a human aspect you never want to see a young person feeling that way or um not really having a sense of themselves because of something like this but again the question i have is is it her is it the tool is it a little of both because my perception and my belief is just that Social media is a tool. It doesn't run itself. As far as I know, there's no chip within social media that, you know, has mind control um, capabilities or anything like that. It's a human behind it. So in my opinion, you have a choice. You can either be on social media, you could not be on social media. Um, it's a choice. And I guess the sticky place is where we get into younger people using these tools and maybe not being as well informed as they could be about the perils of it if you get too addicted if you get too hooked and maybe that's where I'm missing this whole thing but essentially she called it evil and next thing you know she had launched a whole new business you know in tirades against social media and you know looking at your self-worth and that kind of thing and decided to promote it via social media so I think the jury's still out with a lot of people on her in the sense that if you're going to say that something's evil you would think you would just relinquish all ties with it altogether you wouldn't then use it again to amplify the message of another business because if it's evil then what do you want to use it for so it, it's very interesting um it's interesting to me because not only am I a blogger I'm a business owner and I've also become an, what they call an influencer, thought leader, whatever. Um, essentially, I work with brands to amplify their message on campaigns from time to time. So 
a brand may reach out to me because of the readership that I have on my blog um, to say, hey, you know, can you help us kind of get this message out for something? And I have a choice in that. Like, I don't have to work with these brands at all. Um, and I certainly don't have to work with brands that don't mirror um, the message that I try to portray on my blog, or I don't have to work with brands that um, don't align with my values. That's a choice. And I'm very methodical about that on my blog. I have a privacy statement. I'm very clear when I do do sponsored work that um, my readers understand that I have fully vetted the companies I'm working with. If it's a product, I've vetted that product and I'm never going to tell them something that isn't true. So again, going back to this whole story of late where she somehow felt coerced to, um, you know, present these products and that she felt like it wasn't real. Part of me is like, well, if it, if it didn't feel real, either you had a duty not to work with them and or, you know, she's a young woman, maybe her parents had a duty to enlighten her about whether or not you should work with brands just to work with brands. Because again, the whole point of what brands are trying to get to is they're trying to get to small groups and subsets of people that they can market their products to um, because they know that the influencer they're working with has a hook into them um, or it resonates with the people that that influencer influences, if you will. So the whole concept of taking work or presenting or representing a brand just because, and I suspect the money looked good because she did share and disclose some of the money um, dollar amounts that she was paid to do this. So I suspect she was following the dollar, but if you do that, you will end up in this situation. Um, so, you know, a lot of the sentiments we had, especially in some of my groups was probably a mentor would have been good for this young woman um, so that she knew fully what she was getting into when she was getting into it. But I'm just not inclined to say social media on the whole is evil. Like, I'll give you, for instance, I don't particularly care for Facebook, for instance. It's probably one of my least favorite social media platforms. Don't tell anybody. Not that they probably care. Um, I've found places where I am very comfortable on Facebook, and those are in groups, you know, where I can connect directly with people. But um, by no stretch of the imagination is what I don't like about Facebook about the actual tool. Facebook itself, when you think about what it does in terms of connecting people uh, that have you know, either lost touch, family members, et cetera, et cetera, it's monumental what that tool does. It's, it's fantastic. Um, it's for me, why I don't like Facebook a lot of the times is not because of the tool, it's because of what people do with it. It's because of the humans. It's because people get on there and instead of just kind of doing what they do and posting pictures and, you know, all the things that you should do with it that are right, they're on there either ranting about politics, um, ranting about bigotry, you know, getting in other people's business, putting their mouth where it doesn't belong, on and on and on. I don't have to tell you. I'm sure some of you are on Facebook as well. So you know, that aspect of it, that's not the tool at all. That's what people choose to do with it. So I'm very clear with people in my life and my family in general in business that, you know, will say, oh, well, that's social media. You know, I don't know. It's kind of crazy. You know, it, it, it really is destroying lives. And but I'm kind of like pump your brakes a bit. It's not destroying lives. It's what you choose to do with it. And for me, um, I personally have been able to benefit tremendously from social media. So I guess you can call that bias in a sense. Um, but because I've chosen to use it in a way that's productive, I've built a brand, I've built a business, I've built a readership, um, I I've built a network that I am very certain I would not have had had I not been on social media these four and five years that I've been on it. So I've uh, you can't kind of poo-poo something that you've grown something from. And so like with this young woman, Asina, I suspect that um, 
as much as she wants to poo-poo it, she also recognized she was throwing away something grandiose. And so she decided to go back and tap right back into that same following that she had that kind of catapulted her to success to launch this other business. And I'm told that she got some pretty good press just based on what she did this week um, for that new business. So, you know, either that was just dumb luck or she's got a hell of a PR machine behind her. I don't know, but um, I think we can kind of move past this whole concept of social media is the devil. It should go away. I mean, it's not going away. I hate to tell you. I was at um, IBM Insight last week. And before I get into that, let me just reset. If you're tuning in, I am Janine Truitt. I am Chief Innovations Officer for Talent Think Innovations LLC, and you are watching Ask Serena Live. I saw some hearts before. Not sure if it's my husband or somebody that really just liked what I say, but hearts are definitely welcome. So if you like what you're hearing, throw them up. Um, and even more so, you can share this broadcast and that would make me really happy as well. So tonight we are discussing, is social media uh, destroying lives? And so I've just been sharing two of the latest instances where um, people are trying to claim that social media is at fault for destroying people's lives, self-worth, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so about social media not going any place. I mean, I was at IBM Insight last week um, for most of the week and, you know, just without like throwing you way off and um, killing you with a lot of jargon, there's so much coming down the pike when it comes to technology and how it's going to impact our lives, like in general, not just business, but in general, that I hate to tell you, if you're looking for social media to like disappear, it's really not going anywhere anytime soon. And, um, you know, the technologies and where they see this stuff going is really going to just be monumental and catapult itself over the next five to 10 years. So it's, you know, for me, my opinion, where I want to leave it in your heads is that um, social media is just a vessel. It's but a vessel, it's a tool, and um, I think that we make a mistake when we start to blame the tools for what can be controlled through human behavior, plain and simple. And, you know, in both of these stories, part of me, a small part of me, feels a little guilty of being as, you know, forthright as I am on this topic, being that these two people are young women so there's a sense that maybe they didn't know what they know um certainly if they're young now they're growing up in this new reality of you know having a digital persona from really early in life and this is something that I don't understand because I didn't grow up like that I I get the tools I love the tools I'm like pre-interwebs and post-interwebs I'm part of that generation I'm kind of that sandwich generation so it, it may have been a lot of pressure and I don't want to minimize that aspect, but you know, there does need to be a, a broader discussion about how to responsibly use it. And especially when you want to get into this whole aspect of influencing and being a brand influencer, I think it looks very sexy from the outside looking in when you see somebody that's representing top brands on social media. Um, but I think maybe some of these young people need to know more about like what goes into it. What is the right way to be influencing? What do I really need to be thinking about? What is the ethical way of kind of bridging into that kind of industry? See, there goes my HR hat again. So um, I think that's where I'm going to leave it in terms of this topic. I don't think it's evil and... I think we just need to discuss it more and people need to be better informed before they decide to kind of start burning social media at the cross. So I will leave it there. Um, obviously, I'm here every Thursday at 11 p.m. and every week on the blog, 
I'm sharing a new topic. So I will have the new topic up next Monday on the blog that usually goes live at 7.30 Eastern Standard Time. So you can find that at thearistocracyofhr.com anytime you wanna know about the topics. I had mentioned way back, but I'm gonna mention it again just because I think it's fair. Um, I was trying to have these uh, episodes not just reside here, but also reside on my YouTube channel so that if you miss it, you can go to my YouTube and check it out. Like I'm, I'm very methodical like that. Hasn't quite worked out in the sense that Periscope, the app itself is having issues with that connectivity and it's saving to my gallery. So I am working with Periscope on this. They're working on it and assure me that I'm not the only one with the issue. They apologize and they're working on it. So. I will keep you abreast of that and hopefully I will get to a point where I will be able to have this also on my YouTube channel just because 24 hours, I mean, that goes quick. Um, I did want to share that I will be on Periscope again tomorrow because I will be on the holiday edition of Black Biscope. If you're not familiar with Black Biscope, it is a great, great community uh, basically built by um, Christine Saintville, Adia, Rogers, and Pam, um, and I forgive me, Pam, I can't remember your last name, um, Pam of Coils by Nature, but in any event, they have created a community for Black-owned businesses to be highlighted, featured on a weekly basis, and it has grown tremendously. I got wind of it in July and hopped on it pretty quickly. And so I was on it in August for my first time presenting my business and getting to know the community. And it was just tremendous. And they are just such givers that for the holiday season uh, tomorrow, they're going to, they've opened up some slots for a few of us in the group to be able to put out our holiday discounts, products, whatever. So I will be on Black Biz Scope tomorrow at 6.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I am not going to give it away, but I will be sharing a program that's very near and dear to my heart. And I'm going to be opening up. I, this was my plan to open it up to, you know, the masses for the new year. But this opportunity kind of presented itself. And so I'm going to be offering a pretty steep discount for this program on Black Biscope tomorrow. So if you're at all interested I would highly, highly suggest that you support everybody. So they go from like 10 to I think 11 in the morning and then the evening session is about 6 p.m. to 7.45 p.m. So you should support everybody because there's some great businesses that are gonna be on there. But if you're interested specifically in this program that I am going to be presenting tomorrow and this steep, like when I say steep, steep discount that I'm going to be giving on this program, I would highly suggest that you tune in tomorrow at 6.15 p.m. to hear what I have to say. I think it's a great offering. I'm actually in the midst of the first iteration of this, so I'm actually running this program currently and I'm about halfway through with the current group, and so I'm really excited to open it up to other people and um, I'll leave it at that. I hope that you will join me. It Again, it is Black Biz Scope. Um, you can certainly follow it on Twitter as well at hashtag Black Biz Scope on IG. They're also at Black Biz Scope and um, the hashtag is the same for Instagram as well. If you're interested in what I do outside of just chit-chatting with you on Thursdays, you can find me and find out more about my business at Talent Think innovations.com and again the blog is the aristocracy of hr.com for everything world of work working mom employee law everything you can think of i think i've pretty much covered on that blog inclusive of some music at one point don't ask but it was mary j blige i couldn't turn it down so um check me out at those sites I thank everybody that joined me tonight and join me next week um, for a new topic at 11 p.m. right here. All right. So I'm going to bid you adieu.
because I am tired and I have just made my face up to make you all think. See, keeping up appearances, make you all think that this is how I look all the time. <laughs> so thanks for joining me and take care. Have a great day.